Welcome back to day four. Just a quick recap on the activities from day three. In this file converted script, we have selected the input folder and let image.j to generate the output folder automatically. And then we have filtered the files based on the file name using two arrays and used the file format plugin extension to open each series. And we have processed the images further. Then we have set the color and draw strings on our prof image before saving the representative image. So the new things we have learned are the functions that handles file name and path, which start with file dot, and the functions handling strings such as ends with, which we can use for filtering files combining with if statement. And the functions handling array such as new array, array trim, array show is what we have covered. Then the next important thing we have learned was the bioformat macro extensions using ext.getSeriesCount function we can find out how many series inside our image and we can open the image using ext.setSeries and ext.openImagePlus extension. Then we look deeper on how to manage split images using its dimensional information via getDimension function and using the name of image window and recreating the strings. And in the last part, the highlight was to learn on how to add label on our image using set font, set color, and draw string functions. On day four, we will go through the third example of image analysis, which is the co current script. While the previous example was focused on the file handling, this example will focus on the actual image analysis problem, such as detecting co-occurrence. This workflow can be implemented in any kind of image analysis where the relationship of two markers needs to be measured. For example, in quantifying double positive cells, in detecting cells that are in contact with other structure or in detecting cells inside particular foci, in counting synapses touching neurons, in measuring the overlapping proportions of two regions, and more and more. In order to do this, we will need the components which we have used in the previous example, such as loop and array in the batch mode and also more components such as on how to use ROI manager and how to loop ROIs and also how to grab measurements from the ROI and we will also learn on how to log data on our custom data table. So in this script, we will first Select the co-occurrence folder as our input folder. And as we did in previous example, we will generate the output folder automatically. In this co-occurrence folder, we have three tip images. And each image has two channels, red and green. So we will split the channel. From these two channels, we would like to know how many cells are green positive and red positive and double positive. For example, this cell is positive to both green and red, but this cell is only positive to green, and this cell has very faint green but strong red, so depending on the threshold, this cell will be counted either as red positive or double positive. And then we can log this counting result onto our own result table. Unlike the default result table from ImageJ, 
we can set what we want to log in this table. So from each image, we will log image name and how many cells we have detected in total and the breakdown of each group so that how many cells are positive to only red or positive to only green or positive to both. And also in this example, we will make a proof image that shows the raw image and our counting result combines together so we can double check the result visually. So if you look at this image, the double label cells will be colored as yellow and single labeled cells will be colored either as green or red to show which cell was counted as which group. This will be a handy visual tool for us to quickly identify if our result is reliable or not. For example, in this proof image, based on our threshold setting, this cell was detected as positive to red only, but also could be detected as positive to both marker. So we can pick up the wrong result quickly and modify our analysis setting by using this proof image. Once we have the complete table and the proof image, we will save this to the output folder. So this is the general scheme and let's plan out the detail of this processing step. So after we open the image, the first thing we would like to do is to count every cell regardless whether it is green or red. If we have had a reference staining image which is usually the nucleus staining or cytoplasmic staining that shows every cell, we can make a mask for total cells straight away. But this image has only two channels that are labeling different proteins, so we are going to make a binary image for each channel, and then we will add two mask images to make a mask image for total cells. So once we have the total cell mask, we will run Analyze Particle to add all the cells to the ROI Manager. So each cell on this image will be added in the ROI list. From there, we can run a loop for the ROI list and select each ROI to check if it is positive to green or red or both. To check the positivity, we can use the raw intensity image, but also we can use our binary mask for green and red channel. For example, when we look at the first cell from the ROI list, this cell is positive to both green and red. So when we see this, we will increment our counter, which is named as both. Also, we can prepare three empty images for our proof image and add this ROI on the new image where the color will be assigned as yellow. Then we can check the second ROI where it is positive to green but not to red. Then we will increment our counter named as green and add this ROI on the other image where the color will be assigned as green. The last ROI is positive to red, but not to green. So we can increment our counter for red and add this ROI on the other image where the color will be assigned as red. Once we finish the loop for ROI, we will have each counter increased accordingly and the empty images will be filled with corresponding cells. So then we can log this counter value into our custom table and also merge all three images into one. And this is what we are going to do for each image. So now we know the entire workflow, let's go start writing this step by step. The first step is to select the input folder, which is the co-occurrence folder under the demo images folder. 
and for the automatic output folder generation, we can now reuse the segment from the previous script. This will grab the input directory and assemble the output directory path using file separator, file get parent, file get name functions. And then it will create a new folder as our dir path. After that, we can get the list of file in our input folder using get file list function. And then set up a for loop to open each image from the file list and get the name of the file without extension to use it later. And from the opened image, because we are going to count cells and log that counting onto our own custom data table, we are going to create a table to log onto. And also on this table, we are going to log data of every image. So this table will be created before we start the for loop and kept open until the for loop ends. The function to create table is simply called as table.create. And we can add the title of our table inside the bracket. This function will create or reset a table. If there is no table, it will open a new table with a specified name. But if the table with the same name already exists, it will reset the table, which means that all the contents will be cleared. So we need to use this carefully that this is done only once at the beginning of the script, unless we want to reset the table in each iteration. So I will make my table named as cell counting and this will generate an empty table with the title like this. For the column headings and details, we will set it when we have the values to log later on. So on our current scripts, we can place this part before the for loop starts. So this is what it looks like after we have added the table function. When we run the code up to this part, it will open the first image. And from the opened image, we will split the channel. Now we know from the previous example on how the channel name is going to be after split the image and how we can composite those names from our original image name. The title of the original image will be the same as list i in this case. And the name of the split image will have the prefix as C1- or C2-. In the previous example, we were handling many different types of images, and the number of channels was also various, so we had to set this as a variable. So the name of the split image had to be composed with string C plus variable K for channel number, plus string dash, plus the original image name variable. But in this example, we are handling the image that has always two channels. We can simply add string c1 dash and c2 dash in front of the list i. The advantage of this is that this way is a lot simpler, but the disadvantage is that this code can only handle two images, and whenever we have to deal with more channel images, we will have to add additional code. If we end up having 10 channels, we will have to make strings up to C10 dash by ourselves, so it will be less efficient than setting up a for loop like previous example.
but in this case this is simpler anyway so let's use this so once we are able to name our split images we will select each window and rename to a static name such as red and green so we can call this one later easily so if we were to write this process first the image will be split and now we know that we can grab this code from our recorder or use auto completion tool from our editor by typing split And then the name of the first split image will be C1 plus list i, and we will store this in a variable named image. Then we can specifically select this image using select window function and rename it as red. We can also repeat the step for the second channel, and in this case, this image variable can be reused as we are going to use this only up to here temporarily. And we can select a second window where the name starts with C2 dash and rename it as a green. So this is what we have done so far. On the first paragraph, we have generated our folder automatically. And on the second paragraph, we have created a table. Then after we open the first image, we have split the channel and select each split image and rename it as red and green. Next, on each split image, we will perform standard cell detecting workflow and make a binary mask. First, we can apply threshold, but with noisy image like this example, Applying threshold on the raw image may also detect too much noise. So we can reduce the noise on the original image using medium filter first. And then apply threshold. Then we can analyze particle via analyze analyze particle. We will set the size filter between 10 to 300 square microns and set the show option as mask to get the binary image. We will also select the option to include holes. Here is a tip on easy way to find out the value for our size filter from the image visually. Either on the thresholded image like this or binary mask, we can select the wand tool from image jbar and click on the smallest object you'd like to include.
and measure its area by clicking M on the keyboard. Make sure to set our measurements option includes area. Then we can find the lower value of our size filter. We can also do the same thing for our largest object which you'd like to include. In this case, I will select this object and measure the area. One thing to note is that we may have to repeat this on a couple of images before finalizing the value. And also if you are worrying about not being able to check every possible case, we can remove the size filter to measure all and then decide afterward. Back to our analyze particle. After click OK, when the mask image is generated, we will invert LUT back to the normal via image, lookup table, invert LUT. And rename this as red mask via image rename. So this is the recording for us to generate the red mask. We can do the same process on the green channel. By applying the same filter as this image was also noisy. And set the threshold as 100 in this image as this channel has slightly higher background. And analyze particle via analyze analyze particles with the same size filters and options. And invert LUT on the masked image and rename this as green mask via image rename. So this is the recordings for us to generate the green mask. So now we have the binary mask for each channel. We can add these two mask images to make a mask image for total cells. We can use the image calculator via process image calculator. Then select the image one as red mask and select the operation as add and select the image 2 as green mask. In this step, I will select the option to create a new window as I would like to keep both images and have the result as the new window. When the image has been created, I can also rename this as both mask. This is a recording for those two steps. In the image calculator, we can check that this add string is for the add operator and this create string is for the create new window option. So now we have a mask for total cell. We will add all the cells to the ROI manager by running Analyze Particle via Analyze, Analyze Particles.
and in this case we will keep the size filter as it is but instead of generating mask we will select the show option as nothing as we don't need any more new image but we will select this add to manager option as we want to add particles to our ROI manager So each cell on this image is added to the ROI list. And this is a recorded line where we can see the add option here, which is the short name of add to manager option we have used. So this is good, but when we are running a batch, there is also an additional thing for us to consider at this step. Once we have added ROIs on the ROI manager, unless we clear the list out, the new ROIs from the next image will be added after this list. So the list will become longer and longer as the loop repeats. To avoid this, we need to clear out our ROI manager list before adding any new ROIs. We can do this using the ROI manager function with the option string as reset. This function with this option will delete all ROIs on the list. And we can run this every time before we add anything onto the ROI manager. When you start typing ROI Manager on the editor, you can see that there are many options available for the ROI Manager function. It is all the same function name, but the string options inside are different. And most of the string options are from the buttons of ROI Manager tool. For example, this ROI Manager add We'll do the same thing as clicking this add button and this can be also recorded but there are also options which is not available as a button in ROI manager so it is not recordable for example this ROI manager count which will return the number of ROIs on our ROI manager list this type of option can only be found either from this auto completion list or from the built in function list website. This is the exact advantage of scripting as we can access this kind of further options and build our workflow more efficiently. So this is what we have done so far. I've already gone through this line from 1 to 31. And from the line 32, we have made a red mask and green mask using medium filter, set threshold, analyze particle with mask option. And then we have created uh, both mask using image calculator. And then we have cleared up our ROI manager before adding every cells to the ROI manager.